Hello, everybody. I'm Juliana. Um, I'm working at NXP. Um, I'm working uh, here for uh, over 10 years. I started working on uh, Uh, tools on uh, software, uh, hard, uh, software tools for, for software analysis based on hardware trays. And then I've moved to open source. I'm uh, working on um, Linux uh, drivers for security subsystem. Uh, now I'm part of the audio team. Uh, I'm working on uh, sound open firmware, um, Linux drivers, sound uh, sub, uh, from uh, sound subsystem, and uh, also uh, Zephyr. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how we can run uh, Zephyr on uh, HiFi 4 uh, uh, DSP from um, uh, Tensilica. So let's see uh, the content. We're going to start by looking on the hardware overview of the Aerodynamics 8 and Plus. Uh, next, we'll discuss about the current support for the HiFi 4 DSP in Zephyr and uh, what's next, what samples we've been able and what we want to achieve. Um, we're going to uh, speak about the Linux and the Zephyr communication setup, generic uh, communication between the two uh, OSs. Uh, we'll touch is each of these uh, frameworks listed here, Remote Proc, RPMSG, Mailbox, and uh, OpenAMP. Uh, we'll, um, I'll, I'll discuss a bit about the challenges I faced while adding the support for the HiFi 4 DSP and uh, about the, our future plans for, uh, for this um, this core. So first, this is the diagram for the Aerodynamics 8 and Plus. Uh, as you can see, it's split in multiple uh, uh, subsystems. Uh, we have security, we have... Uh, okay. uh, we have display, we have audio, uh, video, and machine learning, and others. But uh, our focus for this presentation will be uh, the main CPU platform. So uh, we have four Cortex-A53 cores and uh, two secondary cores. We have a Tensilica HiFi 4 DSP and the Cortex-M7. But we want to uh, leverage the power processing for the high, for, from the HiFi 4 DSP. Uh, we use it, um, we can use it not just for uh, um, audio, video uh, processing, but also we can migrate neural network uh, um, uh, workload because it has support for TensorFlow Lite. It's a framework uh, uh, that runs uh, uh, neural, uh, machine learning models with just a few kilobytes of memory. And also we can enable uh, optimized and uh, easy to integrate uh, third party uh, software libraries for uh, voice communication, audio processing, uh, neural network function, codecs, and so on. Um, so how the interaction between the application processor and HiFi 4 DSP will work. So we have the application processor. This will be in charge of uh, starting uh, the DSP and also loading the firmware on, uh, on, the, on the secondary core. And in various stages, uh, we have um, we want to have the communication between the two cores, so uh, we'll have interprocess communication. On the application processor, we're going to run uh, uh, Linux, and on the secondary core, we we want to use Zephyr because of uh, its features, rich feature set, and also because it has support for uh, on multiple platform. Um, so HiFi 4 DSP, it's from Extensa. It's uh, not ARM architecture or other, so it's Extensa. Um, so the current uh, the current support uh, this was added a few years back. So we uh, the uh, architecture architectural part and CPU core was al already there. Uh, we added the SOC support and also our uh, our board. We have the NXP ADSP uh, Aerodynamics 8M. Uh, we added the uh, the support for uh, sound open firmware. Um, This was the, the main, uh, the main goal uh, to, to support the sound open firmware. And for this, we also needed to include uh, an overlay uh, in the Extensa, in the Extensa hall for uh, Aerodynamics 8. Um, this current uh, support for sound open firmware has a specific uh, Uh, firmware loader and interprocess per communication. This is in uh, Linux. It's a uh, uh, custom driver uh, in sound subsystem. And this is in charge of uh, powering the DSP and uh, loading the firmware on it. 
Next, what we want to achieve is uh, move from this specific uh, former loader and uh, IPC to a, a more generic one in order to use the DSP not just for audio but also for uh, other use cases. As I've mentioned uh, uh, earlier, we can use the DSP uh, in, um, in multiple ways. So uh, on the Linux side, we'll have a, a, a generic firmware loader and the IPC, which will communicate with the IPC from a generic framework uh, on uh, Zephyr side. Uh, how we want to achieve this was by uh, enabling uh, some samples. So we started with a simple hello world. Uh, we, we, we moved to synchronization, which is a sample that uh, uh, demonstrates how the uh, kernel scheduling, timing, communication works. Um, Dining philosophers, we all know it, it's a classical uh, uh, multi-thread synchronization problem. Uh, for the inter-process communication, we uh, enable the OpenAMP resource table uh, sample. Uh, this demonstrates uh, it's, uh, it's uh, compatible with uh, Linux running on an application processor and uh, Zephyr on a secondary core. And we also want to enable others, so we are also open to suggestions uh, what we can, uh, what we can uh, improve. So uh, the extensor hull we was uh, already there. Uh, we enabled it, uh, as I said uh, earlier. So we need to also uh, include the NXP hull where we have the drivers implemented uh, and also some external libraries. I've mentioned here, here OpenAMP um, and we'll see about, uh, about this uh, later. So for the generic Linux and Zephyr communication setup, there are a lot of discussions, a lot of presentations. Uh, I've uh, added here some of them. Uh, we have the links and everything. But um, mostly they are focusing on communication between two ARM cores. So we have an application processor, uh, Cortex-A, and as a secondary core, we have a Cortex-M4 or M7. Uh, one is, use, uh, is running Linux, the other one Zephyr, or in some cases uh, Zephyr on both uh, cores. So um, our scope is to have uh, a secondary core, uh, an extensor architecture, so we have the hi 54 DSP, which runs Zephyr, and we also want to move from a specific firmware loader to a generic, uh, generic one. And uh, in the next slides, we're going to answer to the questions here. How is the application started and how the DSP, uh, how is the application loaded and how is that uh, DSP started? So we're going to use a remote proc. And um, how the two cores communicate, we'll have RPMSG, mailbox, and OpenMP. So next, we're going to take each of these frameworks. So we'll detail them a little bit and see how we use them to enable our, uh, our samples. So uh, first is uh, remote proc. Uh, this is a framework that starts the DSP uh, and also loads the firmware uh, in the coprocessor uh, memory. Um, there are mul th there are multiple ways to to start the uh, the secondary core. So um, through CFS interface, this has specific uh, start stop uh, uh, or uh, commands. And also you can uh, load the firmware. You can give just the name of the firmware, but this has to be in a specific locations, like uh, in uh, the Linux file system slash lib slash firmware, or you can give the absolute path of the uh, firmware. Um, a second uh, option will be to uh, start to, to load the firmware when the remote proc driver is, uh, is probing, but usually this is not recommended because uh, the Linux file system might not be um, ready when the driver is probed. But this can be fixed by using init ramfse to boot the kernel or uh, uh, having the remote proc driver not built in, but uh, uh, compiled as a module. And a third option will be to start the DSP before Linux is booted. That is done from U-boot and is usually used if you have some hard constraints on the boot time. Um, also, remote proc offers support services to monitor and debug the, the remote processor. Um, so how we use this? Uh, we're going to use this diagram uh, throughout this presentation. So uh, we have the application processor with Linux, we have the hi 54 with Zephyr, and on each horizontal we're going to take uh, uh, and discuss the uh, frameworks we've, we've used. So for the firmware loading and control, we have the generic uh, remote proc driver. This uh, has a set of callbacks uh, used to uh, start uh, the, the start or stop the core to load the firmware uh, and parse the firmware in order to, uh, to set the associated uh, resources like uh, IPC or memory care routes and uh, also has some um, 
callbacks uh, to kick to notify the coprocessor when messages are available uh, between the two cores. Um, and uh, next, we have the IMX DSP ROPROG. This is uh, uh, our prog. This is uh, platform specific. So um, uh, this implements the callbacks uh, uh, that are in charge of uh, specific resources from our hardware. So like registers, um, clocks, or uh, or memory. So um, in our case, on in uh, IMX DSP ROPROG, we had to implement uh, the start and stop functions. Uh, the parse uh, firmware and load firmware because we have a um, write restriction on DSP and uh, the kick method um, uh, as we'll see later on because this notifies uh, the coprocessor that our message is available through a uh, mailbox. Uh, so, in order to have our specific uh, uh, remote proc driver, we have to define the DSP node in the device tree in Linux part. Uh, we'll see also in, uh, in Zephyr. So, in the DSP node, we have to define the compatible. This is uh, based on this, we load our specific driver, the IMX DSP R proc driver. And uh, also, we need to define the memory region properties. Uh, these um, specify the uh, buffers and rings, uh, the base address and uh, the sizes for each of these buffers and rings. Uh, this will be used for uh, uh, firmware code and data, and uh, as we'll see also for inter-process communication. An important aspect here is that um, these addresses here must be uh, associated with uh, the memory mapping from the linker script uh, in, uh, in Zephyr. And also, uh, it's not quite related with remote proc, but uh, uh, in, uh, in Zephyr, I've enabled the uh, UART, the UART4 uh, node here I've added in the DTS because this is the, the one used for uh, DSP. And um, based on the compatible uh, we have there, we uh, load the driver uh, from the NXP HAL. And uh, having all of the above um, enabled, now we can run the Hello World, synchronization philosopher samples, um, and that was it. So just some configuration in the DTS. <laughs> um, so let's see how the communication between the two cores uh, is working. So uh, as mentioned earlier, there are multiple frameworks we used. Uh, first is the RPMSG. Uh, this is a, a remote processor uh, messaging. This is a messaging mechanism uh, which is uh, implemented uh, on top of uh, VirtIO interface that uses uh, virtu uh, uh, VirtIO rings or uh, sh uh, shared rings buffers to send and receive uh, messages from one core to the other uh, over shared, uh, shared memory. Uh, we have two notions uh, here uh, very important for RPMSG. We have channels and endpoints. So uh, an, uh, an endpoint has a local address and, um, um, and the callback associated with it. And um, uh, actually, an endpoint provides a logical connection through a channel. So when um, um, RPMSG driver uh, creates an endpoint, when an incoming uh, message comes through, uh, through that, uh, um, through, through that uh, when, uh, when the driver gets a, a message, compares the destination address of that message to the local address of the endpoint, and if they match, then that message will go through that endpoint. So this is basically how the uh, communication works between, uh, between the two cores. So let's see how we use the RPMHG. Um, for our sample, we, we use OpenAMP uh, uh, resource table sample from, uh, from Zephyr. And for this, you have to, uh, enable, to, to include, to add a DTS overlay. Uh, and here there are two uh, important things to, to add. So first is this uh, Zephyr IP, uh, IPC shared memory. So we have the DSP uh, SRAM3 node where we define the uh, base address of the shared memory and uh, the size. This base address should be uh, in sync with the virtual ring from the uh, DTS from Linux. Uh, and also uh, the, the size should be large enough to include not just the receive and the transmit uh, rings, but also the shared the, the, the buffers. Uh, these are, this is a very important thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, another aspect in, uh, in Zephyr, we had to add um, the resource table section in the uh, linker script of our board. So uh, this resource table is actually a global variable uh, implemented as a structure. 
in which you, you can define the resources that the, the uh, coprocessor uh, requires before it's powered on, like uh, a contiguous uh, physical memory, or um, uh, you can define a customized uh, resource table uh, depending on the features you want to enable, uh, where you can include some uh, uh, entries for, uh, I don't know, uh, buffers for trace, or um, some uh, virtual resources that will be needed uh, by, uh, by the coprocessor in order for, for uh, inter-process communication. Uh, so, uh, this um, resource table has to be, as mentioned, in a specific location, in, the, in a specific section in the linker script, uh, because also on the Linux side, a uh, remote proc uh, framework is looking for this resource table, because it allocates the memory, uh, the, the memory mentioned in, the, in this uh, resource table. It also uh, is in charge of loading the Virtio and RPMHG framework, uh, and also allocates the buffers for uh, in, in case you want to, to use trace uh, for uh, remote proc. So very important here, uh, we have to implement the fine loaded RC uh, C table uh, callback. Otherwise, the resource table won't be found. The buffers won't be uh, the buffers for rings won't be uh, allocated, and actually the communication between the cores will will not work. Uh, next framework is the mailbox. Uh, this, is, uh, this is actually in charge of sending and receiving messages from one part to the other. It's based on uh, a mailbox controller. This is platform dependent. And we also have a client which actually uh, uh, oversees the messages uh, to send and, uh, and receive. So how we use the mailbox? We have the same as with remote proc. We have the generic framework, the mailbox, and our mailbox controller, IMX uh, uh, mailbox. Uh, for this, we have to um, add in the DSP node from the device tree in Linux. We have to have the compatible. Uh, this based on this, we load our uh, driver, and also we need to define the mboxes and mbox names properties. So what uh, these two uh, are doing? So the mboxes defines the messaging unit uh, that we are using. So we have here the messaging unit uh, revision two, and the uh, mboxes uh, we have uh, transmitter, receiver, and the receiver with doorbell. So what uh, what does the IMX mailbox uh, uh, is doing? So this is in charge of uh, handling and configuring the interrupts that are coming from the hardware from the messaging unit uh, peripheral. So uh, the mailbox names, are the, the, from there, the differences between those three, uh, we have a transmitter, receiver, and uh, receiver with doorbell. Uh, the differences he, uh, are, uh, f f between these are uh, based on the registers we're using to configure the interrupt. So we have a, um, a transmitter, register, receiver message, uh, uh, registers, or general purpose interrupt uh, registers for, uh, for messaging unit. Uh, we also have a mailbox on the uh, Zephyr side. Uh, so uh, we added a mailbox node in the uh, DTS. Uh, this loads the IP, uh, IPM uh, IRMX um, driver. This is uh, in charge of handling the interrupts on the Zephyr side. Uh, we also have a driver in NXP Hall. Uh, this is just doing the uh, messaging unit initialization and uh, uh, setup. And uh, this mailbox node from the Zephyr side will be used in our DTS overlay uh, for inter-process communication. So as you can see here, we have the Zephyr um, IPC, uh, which uh, uses the mailbox node, and we enable the mailbox. We set the status as uh, OK. So last is the OpenAMP framework uh, for uh, inter-process communication. This actually does what uh, all the above uh, uh, do. So uh, th this encapsulates the remote proc and RPMHG uh, frameworks. It's, uh, it's based on these open source frameworks. Uh, so it provides um, um, runtime libraries, tooling, and um, uh, just is up the communication between, uh, between the cores. OpenAMP can be run on Linux, can be run on real-time OSs, and also bare metal. Uh, it's based, it's using uh, lean metal um, to uh, access the shared memory. Um, but our use case here, uh, we use OpenAMP just on the Zephyr side, on the HiFi 4 DSP, because on Linux we have the generic frameworks uh, 
already up and running. So we have remote Procar PMAG and Virt.io, which communicates with the Virt.io from the OpenMP in uh, Zephyr. Uh, so in order to enable this, actually we didn't do anything. <laughs> we just used the sample, the OpenMP sample, and this is just, this enables the OpenMP. It's just a configuration. You just uh, set it on yes, and, uh, and that's all. So, but in order for this application to work on our uh, on uh, our specific target, you have to add this DTS overlay where you have to mention the share memory, interprocess communication share memory, and uh, the mailbox no node for um, uh, IPC. So, having all this, now we also have communications between uh, between the two cores. Uh, this is like a conclusion. Uh, this is the, these are the steps uh, for uh, Linux and Zephyr communication. So on Linux side, U-Boot starts the kernel. Uh, next, the remote proc loads the firmware on the DSP and starts the coprocessor. Zephyr boots on the, uh, on the Hi-Fi 4. Um, on the Linux side, the RPMHG driver creates endpoints, and when it, uh, when it does, it uh, sends a notification to, to Zephyr. Um, uh, Zephyr uh, creates also endpoints and sends the name service announcement to the Linux side. This handles this specific uh, message and uh, creates the link between the two cores, and the messages uh, can come and go. But what's up with this name service announcement? So uh, this is a feature. Uh, this uh, is enabled by default. It's mostly used for demos. It's easily uh, enabled uh, using the configuration here. Um, and uh, what it does, it actually creates the channels, the RPMHG devices uh, uh, dynamically. Uh, so on the remote side, we create a remote uh, service which has a um, name and the local address. Uh, these, these two uh, are sent to Linux uh, through a special uh, structure. We have a, a RPMSG NS uh, message structure. Uh, it's sent to Linux. Linux knows how to handle it. Actually, it maps this name and address with an endpoint created uh, uh, in a step uh, before, and it sets the li link between the, between the two cores. So we have the endpoints, and now, as mentioned uh, 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 a bit earlier, uh, we can send a message from one endpoint to the other. So uh, challenges I faced. Well, these are challenges, but more like things to be aware of. Um, there is a vast documentation for remote proc, RPMSG, OpenMP, but these are separately. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't find anything, uh, uh, as, let's say, a step-by-step -step guide on how to enable all these. Uh, so the documentation could be improved. Uh, I'll look, I will work on that also. <laughs> so for the Linux remote proc part, uh, it's very important, uh, at least for IMX, we had a um, um, uh, uh, four bytes write restriction because our applications are written in IRAM and this has a four bytes uh, write application. So we had to implement our uh, own memcopy and uh, memset functions. And also, uh, for interprocess communication, we have to implement the fine loaded RC table. This is mandatory. Uh, I've explained why the resource table is very important because this is uh, the uh, uh, structure where we have the uh, rings defined, and uh, the remote proc from Linux is in charge of allocating the memory for those buffers. So, if you don't, imp if we don't implement this uh, callback. Uh, the resource table won't be found, the buffers won't be allocated, so actually the communication won't work between the two cores. Uh, on the fear part, for the interprocess communication, uh, be aware that the shared memory should be large enough, not just for the rings, but also for their buffers. And uh, also the messaging unit uh, must be correctly initialized and all uh, interrupts uh, enabled. Uh, for IronMX, uh, this is quite easy because uh, we're just using some configs and based on those, we enable all interrupts or uh, uh, some of them. And uh, for the OpenMP, uh, here, um, uh, at least for the hi 4 TSP, we have to do a decache validation when reading the status from the resource table. Uh, otherwise, this is not, uh, is not updated. So no message comes through the through Zephyr. <laughs> So as future work, um, we plan of enabling and maybe creating other new samples in, uh, in Zephyr that will use the DSP uh, API. Um, but first, I have to upstream this OpenMP support. This is a work in progress, so it will be done soon. Uh, 
uh, we want to benchmark some uh, DSP. Uh, we want to benchmark some, uh, to have some uh, DSP results because we want to see uh, how good is the DSP and why we should use it. And uh, maybe use a generic loader for uh, other samples like the sound open firmware. So we are also open to suggestions. So thank you. That's all for me. Yes. Wait a second. Thank you for the presentation. It's very nice. Thank you. Uh, you, you say before is you need to define to in device three to the core. In the software is the same. You you need it. Uh, you have the yeah. You have also a, a specific. You, you don't have a specific core uh, in the device tree. You have a device tree specific for our board for this DSP part. And yeah. in that uh, device tree for uh, for the for the DSP, you'll add the mailbox, uh, the ward, or other peripherals that the DSP will use. Ah, okay. Okay. So in Linux, we have a, a, a device tree which defines all the all the board with the A cores, with the M cores, and also with our DSP. Uh, and in the fields on the field, we have a device tree only for the DSP. And there we enable the peripherals we want to use ah, okay. for the DSP. I see, I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question regarding um, reusability from this code you made. Is it uh, also planned to port it to an EMX RT uh, 500 or 600? 600, 600 well, actually, because we we want to use uh, and uh, we demonstrated that we can use generic frame uh, frameworks uh, for loading and starting the secondary core. I think we can uh, we can try with an uh, IRMX RT. So yeah, it's it's it's. So in plan, so future plan will we'll also include that uh, enabling on IMXRT. We need to find out how to replace Linux in the question with RT. We don't have Linux. Uh, we, uh, but we, we, run, we run safe here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can use the fear, so we'll, we'll, uh, we can use OpenAMP on both. Uh, uh, we can use uh, OpenAMP uh, on, on, uh, both, uh, on both cores. We, we currently use only RP, uh, RP message slide. RP so we cannot start or stop the, the, the DSP now. Um, we, ca we cannot uh, we, use the we DSP. We have not the remote proc. Um, Facilities. We cannot start or stop the, the well, DSP. Well, OpenAMP it also has remote proc. So OpenAMP has RPMHD and also remote proc. Mm. So uh, we can try and use OpenAMP also on the M core, which will start the DSP. Uh, this is. I think this is possible. I haven't tried, but uh, I, I will. I will. I will. Uh, I will. I will try to see if if, if it really works. But theoretically, uh, having the uh, OpenAMP with, as I said, both life uh, cycle management of the coprocessor and uh, RPMHG, that will be possible. Okay. Thanks. You you mentioned multiple times about the importance of sizing the uh, the shared memory and the Zephyr. What's the process you go through to to determine that sizing? Mm, well, um, actually, we have uh, um, these are defined. The sizes and everything are defined in the linker script for uh, for the DSP, and uh, we have the we know how much uh, SRAM we have or uh, DRAM we have for the high five four core, and we uh, 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 put the shared memory to fit in that uh, in that uh, SRAM. And also, it's based on the uh, sizes we give for the uh, virtual rings in the device tree in Linux. So, uh, as mentioned, you have uh, uh, in the device tree in Linux, you have the virtual rings and uh, the base address of there and the size. And yeah, so you put the, uh, that size uh, plus uh, 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 adding a size for the sh for the for the buffers. Hi, thank you for your presentation. So, my question is, how did how did you handle the uh, board, the virtual board uh, in uh, Zephyr 3. You create like se separate shared board or 
um, I don't know exactly, we don't have a virtual board, so it's just the uh, uh, the board, the Hi-Fi 4, uh, you're meaning, uh, ah, okay, I think you're meaning the NXP iDynamics 8M board. Yeah, I meant the separate core, which is actually... Yeah. Yeah, that, well, uh, th that was added like a separate board, but it's, uh, uh, it's in charge only on the, on the DSP. It's just adding, a, uh, to be honest, I, I added this to port, uh, I think, two years back, and uh, I used the starting, uh, starting guide from the Zephyr documentation on how to, to port uh, or how to add a board. I don't know exactly how it's called the documentation. So I went through that uh, uh, documentation step by step, and this is how I added the, the board. So. You, uh, for DSP, it's, it was kind of easy because you just add the core. It's a uh, 10 silica core. It's uh, LX6 uh, compatible, and uh, I've added the shared mem the SRAM and the uh, uh, IRAM we're using for the DSP, and that was all. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So, thank you for the presentation. Very nice. Thank you. And I'm a bit more familiar with the IMX 8MM, the smaller uh, friend, and it has a Cortex M4 as a companion chip. And w we had some troubles in finding the partition, so you have to assign from your boot one peripheral to either the bigger core or the smaller one. Is there the same limitation in this uh, case or not? Um, well, uh, the partitioning were. Uh I think it's also done in uh, U-boot. I'm, I'm not very sure, but for the um, peripherals, uh, you can do it from the at least for the DSP, and I think it's also available for the M core. You can do it for from the uh, device tree. So you have. Uh, uh, as, as, I've, as I've showed for the UART, uh, I have the UART 4 enabled for the DSP because this is the one used. We have four UARTs, but for, uh, UART 4 is used uh, uh, in the, for the Hi-Fi 4. So we can do this from the uh, DTS. Any final questions? Right. Thank you, Yulana. Thank you.